Welcome everyone to the World Co-Creators Convergence Day as part of World Unity Week. Hi, I'm Noelle Marshall, and today I'm here with my wonderful co-creator, Kathy Mason. Hey, Kathy. Hi there. We have co-created an amazing day. We have brought together so many amazing people, and um, we have some featured guests such as Marianne Williamson, and Dr. Jean Houston, Deborah Poneman, the list goes on and on. And um, Kathy, uh, thank you for helping uh, bring this to fruition. Sure, sure. I'm so excited. It feels like the new beginnings are about to happen. And these experts have all of the um, amazing ideas of how we can create the new earth together in unity. And you know, today, uh, what uh, the person who originally brought the co-creators convergence together was Barbara Marks Hubbard. So today we more than salute her. This whole day is dedicated to her, to what she gave to humanity. And she had that wonderful, beautiful question that I want all of you to ponder throughout the day. What is your gift to the shift in humanity? How can we unify and make this a beneficial planet that works for everyone. Perfect, perfect. I'm so glad to be a part of this and to see all of the amazing ways that we can unify in practical ways. There's a lot of practical knowledge that's gonna be shared today. And there's a lot of people that after this event, you'll be able to go and watch everything because it's recorded and really, you might even end up taking notes. They're that brilliant of speakers. Um, their life's work has been to be change agents for this whole time. So they, as soon as we asked them, they rose their hand and said, yes, yes, yes. What do I need to do to help? Well, that's the amazing part of this, Kathy, because all of this has come together in what? 14 days? Yes. And um, even the World Unity Week, uh, which Ben Bowler and John Raymer, we thank them immensely yeah. for this, uh, what are we calling this? A convergence of Zoom rooms. There's going to be 20 live Zoom rooms simultaneously, and that's been happening this whole week. And it's going to culminate on Saturday evening in a closing ceremony that I don't want any of you to miss. It will begin at 6 p.m. Eastern time for an hour and a half where all the co-creators from the whole week and beyond will be together. You don't want to miss that either or our whole day. 15 hours of programming I believe we have coming up. <laughs> yeah, over 60, oh excuse me, over 20 uh, presenters raised their hand and said, I want to share what I know and I want to co-create with you. So that's the joy of this. There's Everyone's left their ego at home, they've left it behind and want to use this incredible technology to share to as many people that are ready to hear it, how we can build the new future. And I think what you're going to find is that the innovations are quite easy to, um, to use. It's not technical and difficult and you have to buy equipment or all of that. This is a, a lot of it's an inside job. So you're right. going to see a lot of the speakers um, using their modalities, which are magnificent. They were selected specifically for this event to help us learn how to unify. And, you know, this is just the beginning because uh, the plan is, is that uh, World Unity Week will conclude online on the 27th but that's just the beginning. And then the next event will be uh, online convergence of Zoom rooms and amazing co-creators will be Peace Week. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but December 20, no, September 21st is the United Nations has declared the International Day of Peace. And uh, that's why I happen to have my peace poll handy here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, Noelle, we're going to have to wrap it up because we want to share that wonderful treat that you have for us. We have a treat of Barbara Marks Hubbard, the visionary, the futurist, the inspiration for this whole day and dare I say, World Unity Week as a whole. 
So bear with me right now. I'm going to bring on the video. The theme of my campaign is to fulfill the dream, a campaign for a positive future. In 1776, our forebears freed the individual from the tyranny of the divine right of kings. They stated the self-evident truth that all men are created equal when there was no equality in the world. There were kings and subjects, classes and races, sexism, yet the power of the word of truth changed the world. In 1984, we faced a tyranny far greater than King George, and we are seeking a freedom even greater than that of the individual. The tyranny we face is the threat of the extinction of the human race. And the freedom we seek is the emancipation of the genius of the human race to fulfill our highest potential. In 1984, we must state the new self-evident truth from the point of power of the American presidency. And the power of this word will transform the world once again. The new truth is that we are one planet, we are one peoples of Earth, and we will live and die together forevermore. It is now in our capacity to destroy civilization as we know it, or to build a world of unprecedented opportunity for all people. We in the Democratic Party have already chosen to commit our strength to the proposition that all people must be housed, clothed, fed, and educated. We have already chosen the shift from weaponry to livingry. Now to fulfill that commitment, we must combine our compassion with our creativity. We must initiate a new process in democracy to identify our positive options, discover our potentials, and commit our political will to long-range goals to fulfill that dream. The office of the vice president is the perfect place to call forth the genius of our people to build a world equal to our power and our aspiration. We have dreamed the dream, Jesse. And we must converge the new ideas, Gary. And we must organize with our masterful new president, Walter Mondale, to do the work. There now resides in the body politic the knowledge, the skills, the technologies, and the resources to fulfill that commitment. But they are horribly misused. 80% of our scientific and technological genius is focused on killing. Our foreign policy is threatening the world with global suicide and so is the policy of the Soviet Union. The United States of America started the game, we must change the game. We must not simply reduce the defense budget, we must convert the military industrial complex from destruction to construction. We must attract friend and foe alike to a new challenge, the building of new worlds on this earth and new worlds in space. We must dedicate our power to overcoming hunger in this century, to restoring our environment, to emancipating our creativity, and to exploring the further reaches of the human spirit and the infinite universe. We must bring together the genius now focused in the war room in a peace room in the White House. Its purpose will be to defeat the real enemies of humanity, hunger, disease, illiteracy, poverty, and war. Its goal will be to plan for the real victories and to map the real breakthroughs. What is now working in health, education, productivity, new energies, community building, education, space development, self-help works, and so forth. We have separated our intelligence from our love our minds from our hearts. The Rainbow Coalition is bringing together all colors and races. It is also now the coalescing of the mind with the heart. It is now time for a new marriage. We should have a wedding in the White House. It is the wedding of love and knowledge, of spirit and material power. Our forebears set forth the vision. It is written on the dollar bill as it is written in our hearts. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. 
Novus Ordo Seclorum, a new order of the ages. You see the unfinished pyramid with the cosmic eye. This means that when we combine our magnificent building power with our spirit and love, we will have a new order of the ages. And finally it says, Annuit Cheptis, God favors this enterprise. This means that we are not doing this work alone. The force is with us. It is the intention of creation that human beings cooperate to build a world in which all people are free to do their best. It is to this new order that we must now recommit. It, the tradition of America is transformation. We must go forth from this place with a vision of the future equal to our capacities. We have the first woman Vice President Geraldine Ferraro to bring feminine power to nurture the potential of the world. I support her totally and enthusiastically. The family of America, joined with the family of the world from whence we come, is the new coalition. Together we shall go to the mountaintop. In this campaign, Martin, Robert, Malcolm and John, Socrates and Jesus, Galileo and Gandhi, we pledge to you who have climbed this mountain before us alone that this time we are coming together. They can kill us one by one, but they can never kill us if we join hands and climb together. Through you, we have caught a glimpse of the human race acting at its highest. Now as a united party and peoples, we can act out the dream. What can I contribute to this magnificent effort? With your help, I can gather the people to build the peace room and the office for the future in this administration. I have spent the last 20 years discovering the new ideas that work. My credentials are in the future. I too am the daughter of an American immigrant who came to the city of Hope, New York City. In 1776, a handful of genius came together to take the first step. In 1984, it will not be a handful, it will be a land full of genius. We will gather in every town, in every village, in every city, in new town meetings of the future to envision the possible society, to seek common goals, to match our needs with our resources, and to cooperate to create the world we choose. We will think globally and act locally. This must be a campaign for a positive future. I propose that we do not spend a single penny or waste a single moment of time on that which divides us, because a house divided against itself cannot stand. It is time to unite not just Democrat with Democrat, but all Americans in a common cause. The cause of America is the cause of the world. Let the Democrats go forth not only as a united force, but as a uniting force for this nation. And we shall work together to fulfill the dream. We will state the word of truth from the place of power in the American presidency. When the word of our potentials goes forth from the American presidency, the word shall be made flesh. In 1776, they aligned to do it, they committed to it, and they co-created it. So must we, and so shall it be. That was Barbara at the 1984 Democratic National Convention. And I often say to myself, if only we listen. Let's just take a moment now and just give some thanks to the inspiration that Barbara Marks Hubbard has been to so many on this planet. Thank you. And now, Kathy, I'd like you to show everyone what the new unity sign is for going forward. Right. So you, everyone knows about the peace sign, right? Well, what the new unity sign is, is a combination of the peace sign where it goes, put your fingers out, put them together, touch your heart, and then go back out. So next time you see people, it's like namaste, where you touch your heart and, and get grounded in your heart. So, it's so that's a new unity sign. Two are separated, they become one, they unite in the heart, and they send out peace. 
Yes. It's beautiful. Thank you, everyone. And be sure to share, share, share. We want so many more people to get the, the message of Unity Week and join us Saturday night for the closing, 6 p.m. Eastern, and it's going to be all broadcast on unityweek.org Facebook page, as well as their website and a lot of other places. <music>